Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And in today's episode, we are going to be focusing on developing a very interesting residential neighborhood around this earthquake scar. This is the Lopez brothers finally getting back into the development game. We've been away from here for a while. And in today's episode, we are going to develop a suburban neighborhood. Whoa, that was an airplane. <laughs> We're gonna connect up these two uh, disconnected neighborhoods. We've got our lifestyle center right here and Palma del Fuego. And the Lopez brothers want to bridge this gap, building up our residential population in an effort to continue to build out their neighborhood. And this earthquake scar is something that people have not, the, the, the origination of this scar. And that's something that we're gonna take advantage of today. If people understood why this was here, it's very unlikely that we could do anything with it. We would have to stabilize it, maybe plant some trees around it and leave it alone. But we're gonna do some really outlandish things to it today because everyone looks at this as a weird scar on the land that no one understands and records of it are, are pretty sparse. It's been hundreds of years at this point since this occurred. Before we get to that, we're gonna to need to do a couple of things. First of all, I want to let you know that we've renamed this uh, as it's been a couple episodes now, but Anonymous suggested that we call the Lifestyle Center the Tower Gardens Lifestyle Center. And I really love that name, so we've gone ahead and renamed that, and now we're set with our new name here. So we are going to build out the Tower Gardens Lifestyle Center and extend this to the Pyrotechnic. But before we start developing around here, I feel like we have to finish out Playa de Matero. It's not something that we could just skip over here. They would absolutely build out the neighborhood that has already begun to develop. It's simply a better choice from a financial standpoint to develop the land that's already been platted, that is already, if we take a look, it's already got utilities. So why wouldn't they build in this area? So we're just gonna build a variety of residential type uses, maybe a couple of commercial uses, trying to pay attention to things like this. We don't wanna to get too close to that. I'm gonna speed this up to try to get some of our development to fill in. And while this fills in, we do have an opportunity, number one, to finish this off, and number two, to add trees around our park. If we look over here, we just have some young lindens along the outside, real nice, and then some date palms through the middle. We've already got our pads laid out, so we really just need to decorate this. Okay, so now if we take a look over here, we did have some park amenities. And the only way that we're able to do that is if we add some park entrances. So I don't have those over here right now, but I am contemplating that. And the reason is we wanna have good land values over here. And that's really the only way that we can accommodate that. So let's go ahead and do that. And truthfully, all I need is the one. So we'll just add this one and call it a day. I was gonna add one over here too, not necessary. And the reason I say that is we are gonna look at our park right here, Olive City Park, turn our budget all the way down. I believe we did the same thing over here, yep, all the way down. We'll make this one Lopez Park. And what we're gonna do here is just add a couple of small park amenities. We don't need to go wild with this. Just a gazebo or two. And we'll add a climbing frame for the kids. Now, oof, 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 that is not good. That is not good. Let's try the other side. If we take a look at our, yeah, the terrain is just a challenge for this. So we should have respected the topography. We're gonna move it right there, which does a better job. I don't love it, but I don't hate it either. So here we go. And what you see now is that we're gonna see some benefit from the land values here. If we take a look, this should improve things a bit. So we're starting to see some of that benefit come this way. It's gonna be challenging. We've got a lot of industrial over here, as we've talked about in previous episodes, and that makes it difficult to have high land value. And truthfully, maybe we don't even want high land values in this area. It's okay to have a little bit of diversity in terms of the values of your housing stock. So we filled this in, we will also landscape a bit in between. So the other thing of interest in this area is you'll recall that we put fences on almost all of these. So definitely less detailing over here 
and that's okay. I think that it's it's totally acceptable to uh, kind of calm down the detailing a bit in some cases. Now, what I don't love is that I inadvertently zoned three tiles over here, and as a result, we've got what looks like a little shack village over here. <laughs> we'll get rid of those and let some larger homes develop. And eventually we'll come back over here and give this the shore treatment that we gave over here. I wanna come over here because we've got a number of lots that the Lopez has prepped that never got built. This does happen where you see lots that become ready and during an economic downturn, maybe they just sit there. Maybe they get turned over. It, it all depends on really the market conditions. And so much of planning is dictated by that. And I think it's something that is difficult for a planner to admit Market forces drive everything. So unless it is a completely publicly funded project, you're gonna see the market really dictate whether or not planning occurs. I'd say, I'd say that incorrectly, whether your plans get implemented, that's probably a better way of, of putting it. And the other way that I would look at it is, uh, it's not just whether the plans get implemented, but also the degree to which they get implemented. That's also another consideration. Sometimes if market conditions are poor and you're not really seeing much development at all, you might have elected officials that are a little more willing to accept plans that don't necessarily meet the original intent of the plan. So uh, lots of discussion right now about what the housing market is going to look like over the next little while. Uh, if, if you've looked for a house in the last while, you've known that the market is is really, uh, it's gotten difficult to buy a house. Aff affordability is is really a challenge right now. And that's probably being generous. If, you, if you're in that boat of trying to buy a house, you know that it's, it's really, it's been really tough for a lot of people, particularly first time home buyers. So if there is some sort of correction, I'd be very curious as to see where those compromises are made. And in many cases, it is that, uh, you know, some things are loosened up. Maybe you're willing to accept development that otherwise you wouldn't have been willing to accept because you need to improve the, you know, the tax rolls in some way during a downturn where uh, tax values decrease. I mean, that's, that's a very real thing. Uh, your tax rolls decrease. You've got to make a lot of really difficult decisions. And in some cases, accepting development that maybe would have been uh, unacceptable previously becomes a little bit more palatable. I'm just parceling off these lots right now. And this is very similar to what we've done in previous builds throughout this community. And there we go. So to create those separate parcels. Now, one of the challenges over here, uh, well, first of all, we have no water. That's a challenge. <laughs> We're gonna need to solve that. And we'll solve that by putting water pipes right underneath our road, right where they belong. And while we're doing this, let's loop our system to prevent disasters from wiping out our entire network. All right, so we have a problem here, and that is that we can't get power to jump over. So we're going to develop a little neighborhood over here. We're gonna look at our topography as we're doing all of this. And what we're gonna do is connect up right here. Our snap tubes, we'll turn everything on. And for many of the neighborhoods over here, we're gonna use a more contemporary style where we are looking at our terrain and using that terrain to make a lot of our development decisions and our road layout decisions. Lay out our neighborhoods according to the existing terrain. Now this road that I'm adding right there, it might not have seemed like an obvious choice. This is functioning as an arterial and I don't wanna have more roads connecting on here than we have to. So I'm already planning on this being a local, uh, basically almost a frontage road. Uh, but it will carry the local traffic through here. We'll have lots of connections onto whatever this road becomes. And then in the future, we'll have minimal connections between this road and this one. We're gonna go significantly more dense through here. We'll again block this road. We don't want any development to occur along the collector. And truth, uh, truthfully, that's functioning as an arterial. So we don't want any, any development along there. And what we would likely see back here would be some sort of cul-de-sac. And you guys know how I feel about these things. I'm trying to just accept it. <laughs> so there we go. There's our uh, lovely cul-de-sac. We're not gonna tee into here. Uh, one thing that we could do to improve this slightly would be to have a pedestrian connection. That is much better. And let's let's round the whole thing out. Oh, we can't, we got a fence there. The wrong fence. I just put up the wrong fence. <laughs> Well, that's an opportunity, the opportunity to fix it. And when we fix it, 
we will use the correct fence. There we go, that is much better. Now, I'm wondering how long this is gonna to take to fill in. We had a whole bunch of residential demand before, but now it's basically gone and we're on to 100% commercial. I guess low demand for residential and some medium demand for commercial. So we'll have to let that go for just a little bit. This is not where I want to mix in commercial. We're gonna have that commercial, but we're not there just yet. So let's let this fill in while we look at developing some more of our neighborhood. So what we're gonna do is upgrade this road right here. You can see that we've, we have this, we're gonna use, say that the road here is a plat road. And we platted in this road right here. And this road, the purpose of it is to be this major collector coming through here. So one thing I wanna do, I just severed this power line. So I think we're gonna make a, a, a temporary connection because we're gonna have lots of work over here and I'm going to create lots of breaks. So what we'll do is just have a temporary line going down this collector right here and that will give us the ability to run this, <laughs> which is important, and stop this. So close right here, so close. I hate adding these temporary lines, but we're gonna do it. Obviously, in reality, <laughs> these buildings would develop where there are power connections. And the power connections would likely be run underground here, likely behind the properties at this lot line. There'd be an easement, you know, 10 or 15 feet, and you wouldn't be able to, well, you could do things back there at your own risk. Uh, but there'd be power lines, some of your utilities, all buried back here, run right along here. So you wouldn't need this big transmission line. Obviously, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So now let's get building. So what we're going to do is just, I want to really think about what the roadway network is going to look like in this area. And then we're going to build a really special amenity right here. Something that is a little uh, odd for the community. So I want to frame everything around this amenity. We don't want to encroach upon it. So what we're going to do is turn on all of our snap twos. We're going to pull this out 20 units come over and we're just gonna extend our lifestyle center grid. You might wonder why we're doing that. And the main reason our contours on is we are going to connect up to this road right here. And I know that's a long ways away, but I think it makes some good sense. So we're gonna come down here, cut against the terrain. So it's a nice level path down. And then we'll come down here with our curved road tool, find our guideline down here, and then bring that right in. So this right here, we're already setting this up to be a pretty important road. Right now, well, it's, it's an important road, but it's not, a, the prominence is certainly going to be elevated. We're gonna have this be a major connection all the way through. So let's send this straight down and I wanna connect this up all the way down there. So now we have this significant road that is really connecting a significant portion of Palma del Fuego. We're gonna need to curve this, so we're cutting against this terrain change a bit and using the curved road tool. You see that we're coming in here, we're getting, getting these close and then working with our terrain in an effort to, so that we don't have to grade a whole bunch of this. I think we've done a good job accomplishing that. Now, these two roads right here are gonna be very important and you're gonna see why in just a second. So we're not gonna touch the scar just yet, this is a no -touching day. but we're gonna touch the area around it. So the Lopez brothers want this to be a faux river and that is going to be a feature that they can have paths around trees around uh, and it's a water feature that really doesn't exist anywhere else it's kind of reminiscent of what is what happened over here at sterling estates there's fires right along it and they're able to grab water from this water feature put out the fires and keep everyone safe i guess they'll be able to do that over here too <laughs> so that is not why we're doing this though we just want this unique feature Developers are always looking for that unique feature to separate their development from the rest of them. So the first thing we're gonna do is level a pad down here. So the whole purpose of this is it's a building pad. This is where we're gonna have homes along here. So they are gonna push some dirt around and make a nice place to build homes. Turn our speed down to one. Find that my terraforming works a little bit better at a speed of one. We are not gonna connect this directly into here. This is our arterial. This will be our collector. We'll connect our local road into the collector. This is another arterial. Again, we wanna minimize our access on there. So I know it's a two lane road, but we are gonna treat this as an arterial, this as a collector, and this as a local road. 
Over here, we're gonna take this to the other side as well. So this is our arterial. This is our collector. We are going to cut up into our collector to make this happen, likely right here. So just thinking about that hierarchy up front. So the city is going to require a certain amount of connectivity. So as much as the Lopez brothers might like to come with a local road and come back here and stop, that's not gonna work. They're gonna need to make connections up here. Uh, we're gonna have a maximum distance. And that distance could be as, it could be as long as a mile. That's a long trip. Uh, what I've seen in some communities that I've worked for is a quarter mile or less, sometimes an eighth of a mile, is a maximum distance for a cul-de-sac. It all depends on the community and the tolerance for, you know, uh, some pretty dangerous situations, bluntly. I don't like how much we have terraformed that. We're going to extend this out a little ways. I want this... So what I'm doing is I'm right mouse clicking up here with my slope terrain tool, and I want to pull this up so that we can make a roadway connection. We're going to do the exact same thing on this side. Let's extend this out again. Right mouse click here, left here. I'm going to pull this right up. And then for here, we've got our earthquake scar, and here's where we start to play with it in a really significant way. So I'm going to grab this height here and pull this back. And what you can see that we've done here, we've created a basin. So this is important because this gives us a couple of things that we can do. So I can delete this. And now when I go to upgrade this to any other kind of road. So we'll come through and we do a tree line street. Now it's a bridge. Now I want this to not be a bridge. Not entirely anyway. So I'm going to come through. I'm going to add a node here. Add a node here. And then I will come back up. Elevate the terrain here. And then I'm going to attempt to upgrade this road back to what it was. Didn't go high enough here, so we will need to change this back. And there we go. We've added this lovely bridge piece in there, which is exactly what we're going to need when we start the water flowing through here. And there's a lot of things happening here, and I'm sure right now you're looking at it thinking, oh my goodness, I do not see what he's thinking. I do not like this. Stay with me. This is going to be neat. Now the fun thing is if I do this right, I get my bridge, my lovely bridge that we had to destroy in the last one. We're getting it over here. Now, actually, we're not going to. <laughs> so why don't we go with something like this lovely European bridge? So we'll take this down and I'm trying to spread this far enough away that we get maximum development potential over here. That's mostly parallel. I don't know that that's perfect. And actually, in hindsight, I don't know that it is going to be perfect. So we'll, we're going to see the need to make this as good as it can be for our purposes. There we go. We're going to go with this. We will get these arches to be perfect, perfect, perfect later on. But we're good for now. So now I want to draw this river through here. So we're going to need our contours on to understand what we're looking at. You can see that we've dropped down quite a bit here now. So what I'm going to do, carve this down. Ooh. Ooh, that's no good. <laughs> that right there is our metro line going to Playa de Matero. So we're going to have to keep that in mind. That is a limiting factor. So what we're going to do here is grab a terrain height and draw a basin. That is significantly lower than I wanted it to be. <laughs> we don't, we don't, we don't want to go crazy here. I mean, we want to go a little crazy, but we don't want to go absolutely insane. Okay, so now you can see that there is a path. And there's some things happening with this path. But we will resolve those things. So like right here, let's fix this. And then we want this to be wide enough that the water will flow down it and not over the sides. And here we'll do the same thing. Now you can see right here, the height drops off a bit. It's going to be a problem. We're going to have water blowing over the sides if we don't fix this. So here, we're just gonna ever so slightly tip, 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 there we go. That drops down. As long as our flow is not too strong, we shouldn't have this going over the sides. We'll see though. It, it, you know, whenever you play with water, just, just reasonably. So we're gonna need to do something. Something won't be right. All right, so now we've got this bowl up here. Flatten this out just a bit. And then I'm gonna just drop this way down. And what we're gonna do is grab one of our freshwater outlets 
one of the Stars of the Natural Disasters DLC. Just gonna plop that thing way down there. We wanna hide that. And now around this, we are going to plop some rocks. Let's turn our contours off. We don't need that anymore. Or we probably do, but we don't need it right now. We are going to add in some rocks. Okay, so that is pretty steep and that's a little weird. So we are going to, what we're gonna do is go back to our shift terrain tool, come up to the rocks. We can just drop those down to make them fit into the terrain a bit more. And you gotta remember these rocks actually terraform or hold the water back. So if we terraform into them, they will interact with the water. And then just around the edge, I'm just gonna push up the soil so we don't have that weird. There we go. I think that's looking a lot better. But we can do even more. And what we're gonna do is load up the bottom of this, some vegetation, and then load up the sides as well. Now you might wonder, why am I doing this right now? It's because once this has, once this is filled in with water, once this is actually connected to the network and has power, it's going to be impossible to add this without turning it off. And now I want to calm some of these outer slopes down. That's some pretty steep edges. That is no good in my opinion. And then we've got them over here too. We'll calm these ones down as well. Now things are just looking a lot more natural. So we've taken this, we've clearly, clearly done some things here. But I really like the way it's turned out. We're gonna add some trees in here eventually, but the first thing I wanna do is build our roads. So let's look at our contours. And you can see that we've got these contours on the side now. We're gonna start out with, oh, interesting. Path is not in the ground. So we're gonna need to add that down. Same thing here. So there we go. We've got a nice connection right there. You're going to, again, like I mentioned, connect this up over here. Let's make a nice gentle connection. We are going to use our slope terrain tool. We'll come up right about here to get a nice distance from our existing roadway. Come up here. And I just want to pull this down. We're going to come in at approximately a 90. And then we'll bring this right down. And for the most of the rest of the build, I'm going to try to use the freeform tool as much as possible in an effort to get some organic looking roadway facility. So this will be a little less, a little less straight, a little more flowing. Just because it's not perfectly straight doesn't mean it's not well connected. Beautiful. I really like that. I really, really like that. Now here we're gonna do something similar. Come right down. It's the beautiful connection right at the end. Now from here, we want to, we're gonna have water flowing down here and I wanna make sure that this is a public amenity, not a private one. So what we're gonna do is add in a path connection. Let's turn everything off. Hold this up the back end. And we'll stop the path right there so part of it Maybe we just won't develop this part at all as a way to prevent that from becoming a, a private amenity. There we go. And truthfully, this whole side right here, we could leave this open and just have some landscaping along here, make this feel like a real special place. Let's go ahead and get this connected. I wanna get that water flowing so we get an idea of how this is gonna look and how it's gonna function. Let's just pull this down. So on this road, I'm envisioning a whole bunch of commercial uses. So I'm gonna add this commercial bank of uses here, and then we're gonna divide this block in half. It's really kind of a long block and a lot of undeveloped land if we leave it as is. And this will be interesting because we're gonna have a residential corridor in between two commercial corridors. I think this is gonna get us to bridge our power across though, and as much as much fun as it would be to draw a fake power line. <laughs> <laughs> just don't want to do it. I'm going to speed this up and let this spread across. All right, we got our connection. Now we're going to see our water. I really hope that this fills up nicely. Interesting. So far, nothing. 
I'm not sure why. Got it all the way up. See, it's connected with water. It is showing that it's not connected, which is curious. So I'm gonna delete that and, and try again. The only other thing that I could think is that it wants to be higher. Okay, and now we have water. I just had to redo that. I don't know why. I'm going to lower this down. I want this to feel like it's underwater. I was hoping that this would be lower. That's not going to work, though. Let's just see what happens when this fills up for a while. So this is very curious. It is not accepting this at all. It's as though the water is just disappearing into the ground. I don't understand what's going on. We're gonna try this one more time. It's gonna drive me absolutely crazy, but we are gonna get this to work. I've gotten this to work elsewhere in the build, and I've definitely, definitely, definitely practiced building these. And I love making these things, so there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to do it now. So here's attempt three. Okay, so we finally have this thing running, which is good. Now we just need to make sure that it's actually going to stay in here. The nice thing is, it seems like this is kind of hidden. So that's that was the goal, is to hide this. So let's pull this back for just a second and see how well it fills in. Oh, that is lovely. That is lovely. It's working well. It's holding the water back. But boy, is there a lot up here. This must be, there must be some sort of a pinch point. We're going to want to resolve that. Okay, so a little bit of playing to try to get this to do something a little more natural. Still doing some things. <laughs> Part of that is we're simulating quick. It is going to be a, a rougher around the edges simulation at first until it evens out. But I don't see major flooding, and that was my primary concern. So the next thing I want to do is look at these arches. I either want to go big with the arches or go small. And I think I'm going to choose to go small. So what I mean by that is I'm going to pull this up here. Do the exact same thing on this end. It's really hoping that I could maybe only show one arch. It is looking like that is not super possible. So we'll just see. I'll see if I can tap this down just a little bit. It's fine. We'll just even it out nicely. Okay, so let's finish off some of the landscaping around here. Okay, so why did we do this? If we take a look here, we can see that the land values around this scar are already higher than the land values just inside of this area. So now we've extended the high land values up through here. And interestingly, you see that in this area, the values are really high. So we've really created some opportunities for ourselves. So let's pull this out and really make a steep cliff there. And now what we're gonna do is draw in some more roads. So what we're the, the the goal here will be to respect roadway hierarchy, create a natural roadway connection throughout most of the area. Do that fairly rapidly. And then we'll go through at some of our city services and think about our networks in terms of the bike network and our transit facilities. Okay, so in this part of the development, I feel like we've maximized our saleable lots. We have connectivity where it makes sense and where it doesn't, we have severed it. So we're really focusing on this collector to provide distribution through the neighborhood. This is also acting as a collector and all of our local roads are really teeing into those ones. You can see that we really get into some organic shapes through here and uh, following the terrain, 
following our slopes rather than adhering to a strict grid as we saw through here, but still trying to maintain the connections through there as best we can. So we're gonna do the exact same thing on this side, but try to maintain again the way that this, uh, you, you can kind of tell that some of these roads were meant to connect and some of them maybe not, not as easy to, to tell. We're trying to maintain those. It's always a, a question when you have a new plat. Where do you, where, the, where were the roads supposed to connect? Sometimes it's not always apparent. Sometimes they actually have the same name on either side. Just depends. So in this case, we're gonna be making some educated guesses, finding some logical termini for these roads. Okay, and in these locations, I've added cul-de-sacs where we're just trying to ensure that we can develop as much as possible. And that's why we have some of those. So as you can see, there's a pretty tight, tightly connected network through here. There's certainly some things that we could improve, pedestrian connections. And if I were reviewing a plat that looked like this, that's the first thing I would do is I would look at it and say, well, where can we make some more connections through here? Because if you live on this street right here, it's gonna be a, a very difficult and long walk to get to your friend's house around the block. So let's go ahead and just make sure that these cul-de-sacs are connected up somewhere. And you can even see visually, you don't see any cul-de-sacs now. There are cul-de-sacs but they don't feel like it. And that is the point, that is the point. So we're gonna add some water pipes through our new neighborhood and then we'll add city services. Okay, now that was really, ah, I missed one. That was really something special. There's a lot of water pipes there. And you know, when you have this many, you've really got to pay attention because you can get a really small area without water underneath the road and it'll feel like you're going crazy. <laughs> I really don't want that experience. So now that we have this, let's get some roads upgraded. So this is something that would absolutely only happen at time of development, but we are going to zone this whole thing out and let it fill in. So this is something I'm really excited about because our population has been relatively stagnant for a while. And I wanna see what we can do about that today. We're gonna to do more than we have been. We're just gonna build this out and get the population moving. Oh no, a sinkhole. I don't know where that's gonna happen, but we're about to find out. <laughs> so hopefully it's not here. <laughs> we might have something else to decorate. Okay, if we're gonna have a sinkhole, this is about as good of a place as it could happen. <laughs> so feeling very privileged that we had our sinkhole out in the ocean <laughs> because we developed most of the map. So why wouldn't it impact our city? There we go. So we've got most everything here upgraded without any problems. There's one issue right here. Not the end of the world though. So now we need to start thinking about our city services. Now this, the way that I'm developing this, I just want to be upfront with you. This would never happen like this. The upfront infrastructure cost that the Lopez brothers would have sunk into this would absolutely destroy their business. But this is city skylines. We need our population to get past this 162 nonsense. We've been stuck there forever and it feels like no matter what we do, we are stuck. So this is as much a test to see what we can do to force up the issue and to get ourselves beyond where we've been at as it is anything else. I wanna try a couple of things. First of all, we need to look at our schools, the situation for schools, we have elementary schools and high schools, both four over here. So we'll add an elementary school and a high school over here. 
I'm curious, can I just add this climbing frame to the side of the road over here? I can't, I like that. So that'll be what we have with our school. Yeah, that is nice. Kind of strange that there's no way to access it, but <laughs> we'll have to use a little bit of imagination there and we'll be fine doing that. Grab the sports hall and put that over here. And we're also going to grab some of our favorite parks, our tennis court and our basketball court. Put those over there. Make this a really happening place to be. We have this chirper balloon tour. I've never used that. We're going to need to use that somewhere, but not here. Not here. Uh, lots and lots of parks. So the large playground, we're certainly going to sprinkle that throughout the neighborhood wherever it fits, which will probably be nowhere. It's so big and it requires a flat area. Yeah, I never leave enough space for this one, which is really unfortunate. All right, small playgrounds all over the place. And I want to look at that circle and try to make sure that we are giving everyone access to a playground. We're going to do that with a few of these parks. I think it's important with a playground, with a dog park, to make sure you can walk to one. That's providing all of the citizens of the city dignity. I think it's important. So there we go. We've added some small parks. Some small playgrounds rather. We can have a few other small parks through here as well. Ooh, we can use up some of that space. Some of these parks will terraform to some of these awkward spaces. And I'm not against having multiple parks in close proximity to really boost up that land value. Now, one thing I know that we don't have over here is a public library. We have this new high school complex. We're gonna add a public library in close proximity. By close proximity, I mean way on the other side of town, <laughs> close to this lifestyle center. That'll that'll do the trick. You could walk there, kid. You're fine, right? All right, and let's take a look at healthcare. I think we're fine on healthcare. Death care, I think we're fine there as well. Fire protection, we're gonna need some sort of protection here. So we're gonna add a watchtower at the high point. Protect us up right there. Police protection, we likely need something more. So I'm going to add in a police station down here on this, or just off this main collector that I have denoted with trees, just to remind myself what this is. Cl a quick visual. If I were to really think about it, it would work. I'd, I'd be able to figure it out, but sometimes it's just nice to leave yourself a reminder. There we go. There we go. So the very, oh, first of all, we've got, let's, we've got a bike network. We have no connection over here and look at how circuitous the route is going to be. So because there are no direct connections, I suppose I could take this one. And then alternatively right here, that's probably another good connection to the bike network. And then over here. So just trying to provide a couple of ways in and out. The rest of these, you know, if you were a confident biker, maybe you'd be able to bike on some of these. The local streets, generally, you wouldn't want to put bike lanes on anyway. That's really me playing with the game mechanics. But generally, if you've designed your local road appropriately and correctly, someone should feel comfortable biking on there without bike lanes. All right, and the very last thing I want to think about a little bit is transit. Now, eventually, we're going to take this metro line and bring that right in here but that's not where we're at right now where we're at right now is we have buses and there's a bus station right here so we're going to add some routes so add a new route and this one's going to go straight through the lifestyle center and we have a high number of stops through here to ensure that we are providing absolutely excellent accessibility to this area Let's create a new line. This is going to be a line whose primary purpose is providing coverage. So we are going to go up our higher capacity streets. We just want to provide coverage to this area. Doesn't mean it's going to be a very pleasurable route to take. Might take you a little, a little longer to get around on here, but if you depend on this route, it's probably good enough in your opinion. You're just happy to have it. So I'll provide a transfer opportunity right here and then we'll end this. We've got to mirror this. We can't just leave this as is, even if it doesn't operate bi-directionally all the time in real life, that would be a thing that you'd potentially see this 
bi-directional during the peak, off peak, maybe uh, one direction. Depends really on the budget. And I think you could certainly add more coverage, but this is going to be a low density residential area primarily. So I don't know that a lot of coverage is warranted, as sad as that is. So we're gonna go up and down our collector with some commercial uses. We know that we've got demand for that, and this will hopefully bridge our power up and down this area. We'll see, that's my theory and I'm sticking to it. And now I'm gonna do something I would highly recommend you never do. <laughs> <laughs> we are gonna come through and just mono zone everything through here. This is a gigantic suburban area. I need to be very careful because there are areas where I have been very thoughtful and deliberate with my zoning. This is anything but. However, I think we can make it work here. I just wanna make sure we're not getting inside of this park. Inside of the lifestyle center, there are areas where if I zone inside of there, I'm gonna create problems. Okay, so what you see now is we've gone through, we've made all of our zoning decisions through here. And this is likely what would happen at the time of the plat. You come through, you get your zoning entitlements, and then for the next 20 years, you build this neighborhood out. Thankfully, this is city skylines. We don't have to wait 20 years. We can wait 20 minutes in my time, and I'm not sure how long in yours. Hopefully not more than 20 seconds. <laughs> Let's... Let this go for just a minute and watch our city fill in, and then we're gonna see what our population is. And as I let this build out, I can't believe what I'm realizing. I made a huge mistake. So we forgot our dog parks. This is something we must rectify. We must have dog parks within walking distance of everybody. So there's one right there, another one right here. And now everyone has a dog park. Everyone, including the folks over here, are now in favor of the development. We know that a dog park cures all ills in the world. So we've got them in there. Okay, so I've let this go for about 20 minutes and there's something interesting happening. So I wanna take a look at this because we can see that we're mostly happy here. Things are looking good and our coverage for, for our services, I think it's also fairly good, yet we're not filling in. So to me, that is just, we've zoned a lot all at once and it's gonna take a while for this to fill in. So yeah, I'm kind of going through the services. I guess we could use more libraries. <laughs> uh, for elementary school coverage, also not awesome. So we could certainly improve that. Maybe we'll pop a couple more in here. I hate just popping these in here, especially when, when our coverage is so good, but clearly it's not, it's not working. So I'm gonna add a couple through here. This is me responding to game mechanics. Everyone loves it. So, how do you turn it down? We'll add in one more. We'll vary it up though. And then let's look at our high schools as well. Again, same deal. We'll add an Institute of Creative Arts, maybe down here, near the coast. What I don't love about that is we're really close to that road. But this is a good location from an access standpoint. And then everything else, when we look at our parks, even our unique buildings, our coverage is pretty good. It's just gonna take some time. So the other thing that we could do, we could certainly drop in some more neighborhood serving commercial uses. I will add in a couple down here, but nothing all that all that dramatic. That's purposeful. I don't think that this area, you know, that's one of the things that the game forces you to do is add maybe a, a bit too much commercial in. There are areas like this that there's just a lot of residential and that's what this area is. Kind of like Sterling Estates, where it's a lot of residential and not much commercial. That said, we'll give it a little bit of what it's looking for and nothing more. <laughs> so, you know, at worst case scenario, we may have to come along this collector here. 
and come through. Maybe we'll do that quickly just to see if this improves things. Okay, so this is going to take a little while to fill in. Obviously, after what we've seen, you know, we are absolutely adding a whole bunch through here. This is residential that I think that we need, but it's just going to take a little while to fill in. So while we're waiting, why don't we zoom in to our new commercial corridor and have a brief city tour. Okay, and you know, we are not filled in. But I think you get a sense for what this area is going to become and why this is gonna be such a special place. And we zoom out, we can see that one of the reasons this area is taking so long to fill in is in comparison to some other areas that we've developed, it's actually quite large. We're looking at an area the size of Sterling Estates. We're looking at an area the size of Old Verde Beach, all developed at once. And this is something that you happen to see in suburban areas. So that's why it takes so long to fill out sometimes. If you look at the sheer size of these areas, they're absolutely massive. And the diversity of uses is not very high. So you end up with, with things like this where it just takes some time. From that perspective, yeah, this is kind of a fair simulation. It does take a while. And reasonably, I don't think this would be a very exciting place to live. With the exception of some of these places right along the coast, can you imagine the views you'd have right here? Wow, you get some downtown city views, you get water, you get ocean. You can even get some views of the lovely harbor. So I think it'd be an interesting place. I, I think it's unfortunate that the game is, is filling in back here first, but you know, it's a game. So with that, we're gonna forgive it. I think we're gonna leave it here. I hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one where we watch the rest of this fill in and continue to build out and detail this little neighborhood. There's a lot that needs to be done, but I'm here for it if you're here for it. Take care. Bye bye.